is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. There's been a new release, the Quick Run WP10BL60G2. We're going to take a look at this sample and talk about what has changed in this new version. Like most things in the RC world, as they get updated, they get features and they get a little bit smaller. This guy shrunk down by a couple millimeters in every direction. We'll get the calipers out because that's everybody's favorite part. You got a 36 and some change on the width. Uh, that's millimeters, 30, call it 35, 34.8 on the height. And then our length this way is going to be 46, call it 0.1 is what it says on there. Uh, we'll do it again in inches just in case, but that one is 1.86. Uh, the height is 1.37 and the width is going to be 1.43. Uh, this guy does have the 14 gauge wire on there. It's a 16 amp unit that's rated for just about any of the motors in the Quick Run series, I think the two cell motor limit on this guy is rated at a 6,000 kV four pole. That's a pretty low turn two pole motor. And for the uh, 3S applications, it says it'll go down to uh, 3,500 kV, so still nice and quick. We always get asked about tuning. It does work fine without any additional tuning. All you have to do is connect it and do the radio calibration so it learns the neutral, the throttle, and the reverse off it. We're gonna do that here in a second. Um, but if you did wanna make tuning changes, it does work uh, with any of the programming devices that we offer except the OTA. It works with the LED card as well as the LCD Pro, uh, but it does not work with the OTA. And it also has, the set button programming so you can do onboard programming using the light on the speed control and the buttons as well there are four millimeter bullet plugs on here so it'll work with all the four millimeter bu bullet plug motors uh, like i said from the quick run series it runs basically any of the quick run motors that you might get into now this is a pre-production sample so this isn't like an official unboxing this is just this give you an idea of all the cool stuff that this guy does and some of the features i'm going to hook this up to a radio right now show you guys the calibration and we'll talk about the settings that it has available this is going to cover basic calibration if you didn't know steering is number one throttle is number two on most receivers in the world so double check that pro tip on the Traxxas stuff if you were to plug this guy in backwards on accident because this plug will fit both ways very easily and it's powered on that'll cause damage to the throttle channel but the rest of them work so if that's happened to you know you're not the only one uh, always have your radio turned on before you ever turn on the speed control. I like to do it before I even turn on the bat or plug the battery in, but you know, that's just me. Uh, I do have a motor hooked up here so we can hear all the beeps, and we'll try to get this guy angled so that we can see the light. There's a set key right there and an on-off switch. To do the calibration, you start with the speed or the radio turned on. You're going to hold down the set button, turn the switch on. It's going to flash like that. You let go, then you tap the button to set neutral. That sets it. Hold full throttle, tap the button again. That sets full throttle. Hold full reverse, tap the button again. And it sets the full reverse range. And then after that, your light should look like this. So you get no lights when you're not driving. You get a red light as you get into the throttle. And then a green light when you get up to full throttle. And the same thing will happen in reverse, or you get a double tap because there's the brakes first. But because it defaults with the reverse turned down, you're only getting partial. If you turn the reverse up in the settings, that'll go to green when you get to full reverse. So that is basic calibration. For the most part, all the speed controls in the lineup that have a switch and a button, they all kind of work that same way. Let's talk about the programming. This guy has nine settings on it, but they're not the same as the stickers that are on a lot of these yet. You're gonna have to reference the instruction manual chart. I'll show you that here. But before we get into that, I wanna show you basically how any of the programmers work. They plug into the fan port. And on that fan port, there's a marking on the front, a negative, a positive, and a funny shape. The funny shape goes to the white wire. You'll turn the speed control on, and let's say we want to turn the reverse force up. I have an instruction manual on the side here. I know that's item number six. So I'm going to cycle through the items over to number six. I'm going to change that value all the way up to number four. And then I'm going to have to hit OK to save. If you don't hit OK or save if you're using the LCD Pro, it doesn't actually put the settings in the speed control, and you won't get that. Uh, so we'll turn this guy off. Turn the radio back on. Turn the speed control on. And if we did that correctly, we should get green light when we go to reverse now. So we got the full power of the reverse. Now, next, we're gonna show you the built-in onboard programming. You don't have to have a programmer to make setting changes. Uh, it does have a programmability through the switch and the button. It works a lot like the calibration. We're gonna do a long press and hold. We turn the switch on, it starts to flash. You keep holding it down until it starts to flash green. That's one for setting number one, two for item number two, three for item number three, 
four for item number four, and then five is weird. It's a long beep for a five. Six is a long and a short. Long and a short, there you go. Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, and eight. That's five and four makes nine. It comes back around to number one. Now when you get to the one you want to adjust, you let go and it'll flash the setting that it's currently in. Setting number one is default to number two. So we can switch that by tapping the button. Now we get three flashes and wait, it'll just keep cycling through here until you do something. And then when you get to the setting you want, all you do is turn it off, uh, turn it back on, and then you got your settings changed in there. That is mode or setting number one, which should be the, I just put it in rock crawl mode basically. So. There you go, built-in onboard programming, very handy. So now that we know how to program it, let's take a look at the instruction manual and talk about what all these different settings do. Up first, you have your running mode. You have four options there from value number one. You can have forward and brake for like racing applications where reverse isn't allowed. The normal driving mode, which is option number two, forward with uh, brake before reverse, and then rock crawl, which is just forward and reverse. Sure. Setting number two is the cutoff voltage of the LiPo mode. You can adjust it up or down as a basic per cell setting and it auto calculates if it's a two cell or a three cell or you could turn it off if you're using nickel metal hydrides. Default setting at three volts per cell is gonna work pretty safe for the most part. Nothing to really worry about. If you wanted to be safer, you could increase that LiPo setting. The punch setting number three is the time response of the speed control based off your throttle inputs. If you find that the throttle is too twitchy, you can't pull the trigger slow enough, you can lower the punch. If you want quicker response from the speed control to your throttle input, you would raise that punch setting. Setting number four is your drag brake force. That is brakes at neutral. So when you let off the throttle, it applies the brakes. If you're doing a lot of rock crawling, you can turn that up. If you're on a very high grip track application, sometimes people run the drag brake up a little bit. For the most part, zero drag brake is the way to go. Your max brake force is the overall strength of the push brakes when you go to apply the brakes to the speed control. So sometimes, especially with four pole motors, the brakes are a little too sensitive and lowering that overall brake force makes it a lot easier on the driver. Next up is setting number six, the max reverse force. That's the reverse speed. If a lot of people aren't very good at pushing the throttle the other direction, so reverse defaults to lower speed. You can turn that up if you need to. After that, setting number seven is the neutral range. That's the dead zone between the first throttle and the first reverse or brake pulse. Some radios, the trigger or the throttle wears out over time and you get inconsistent reverse operation or inconsistent brakes. Uh, turning that neutral range up will help deal with a, a, a sloppy neutral, basically. Uh, next one is the timing. It's electronic and timing advance that the speed control applies to the motor to make it a little bit faster. Makes motors run a little bit better. Sensorless motors don't have an end bell for timing, so this allows you to have some timing in there all the time. It defaults to 11.25 degrees. It goes all the way up to 26.5. And finally, the ninth setting is the LiPo cells. You can set it to auto, so if you're switching back, so it'll deal with that. Or you can set it to two or three cell that have dedicated cutoff or dedicated battery packs. If you're not switching packs, it's a safer way to go. That way, if you were to plug in a dead battery, it might think it's a full charge battery, something along those lines. So that's a quick rundown of the basic programmable items of the WP10BL60G2. That is a very long name. And if I didn't mention it before, WP does mean it's element resistant, waterproof for the most part. It has a six volt, three amp BEC. It is rated for two to three, L three cell LiPo. A 14 gauge wire with four millimeter bullet plugs installed. And like we mentioned and showed, it does work with the programmers as well as onboard tuning. Well, and don't forget, folks, we do a podcast. If you like free stuff, you should listen to our podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away free Hobbywing stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email. You can reach us directly through North America at Hobbywing.com. And as always, folks, thanks for watching new every Tuesday right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. It's The Charlie Show. We will see you all next time.